for Odell. The Browns sent the 17th overall pick, a third round pick, and safety Jabril Peppers to New York. Yeah. And since this big trade, many Browns players have gone, and fans have gone to social media to express their excitement for getting Odell, obviously. Yes, yes. Like Jarvis Landry, who posted a picture of himself on FaceTime with Odell. It's a very, very clear picture, actually. <laughs> no, I was going to say, that's really well done. Um, it's, the caption says, it felt, it feel good, and tagged Odell. I love you, brother. They played three years together at LSU in 2011 to 2013. And actually, the wide receiver coach for the Browns right now, um, Adam Henry, was their wide receiver coach in 2012 and 2013 at LSU. Yeah, he's got some relationship so there's connections. A, there's a, some strong relationships there. Baker Mayfield also shared an image with Odell and Landry. Let me see. They were at USC last year working out. He's excited. He should be. The, uh, if I was, the closed mouth. If I was Baker Mayfield. Emoji. Not very often that you come into the NFL and by the second year, you have arguably the best pieces around you. Mitch Trubisky, I mean, God, Jared Goff was close. Jared had really yeah, good pieces. Jared, Jared, had a, couple, Jared had a couple good pieces. Yeah. This is strong, though, and stars. I mean, they're just they're just filled with stars now. Yeah. And LeBron James posted a picture of Odell in a Brown jersey saying, oh my, bleep just got real. Obviously, this is a little confusing because he claims to be a Cowboys yeah, fan. Yeah, I was going to say LeBron's a Cowboy fan. Here's where I'll defend LeBron on this Cowboys. Oh, I like that. Can't wait thing. to hear this because people get a little confused with me because I'm I'm a Dolphins fan, but I also support the Steelers because yes. it's my hometown team, and it's not allowed to grow up in Pittsburgh and not be a Steelers fan, right? <clears throat> Unless you're my mother, who is inexplicably a Cowboys fan, but I think she just does that because she likes she likes being chaotic. But um, yeah, so people are excited that Odell is included. Of course, they should be. Yes, uh, I mean, what's interesting to me though is there. They're playing with expectations for the first time oh, oh. that I can remember I, in my lifetime. And that makes things very, very different. It's yep. one thing to be the underdog yes. and surprise everyone. Loose fun, energy, yeah. Right. And even even last year, they they didn't have expectations, but people were watching because of Baker Mayfield. I, I felt like he should have been starting from the beginning. But I yeah. feel like overall, people sort of gave them a pass. It was very chaotic at the beginning of the season. It's hard for any quarterback to do even what Baker did last year in Cleveland. Yeah. This year, it's going to be a little bit different. For uh, And listen, not rooting against them. It's just going to be different. Even though that's in my my blood to do. Yeah. I'm very excited to watch it, though. So Le'Veon Bell agreed to a four-year, $52.5 million deal with the Jets yesterday. The deal includes $35 million guaranteed and could reach up to $61 million in incentives. Yeah. But back in 2018, a fan tweeted that the Jets should give Le'Veon $60 million to join the team. Yeah. Here was his now-deleted response. Uh little rolling eyes emoji. That ain't enough to come run with the Jets. Yeah. I don't care that he said this. It's not a big deal, obviously. Things change. Like, you're reacting I, in the I, moment. I don't either, but I will say he lost $15 million. He'll never get back. And I really, I think he's a good kid. I don't know if he loves football. Like, is he going to go into the season feeling like, hey, you got me on a discount, and the first time he gets hurt, I'm sitting out week 9, 10. Like, I just, I know Odell Beckham, if he's healthy, will play. With Le'Veon Bell, if he walks into the season feeling like he is underpaid, even though he got this deal, do I get 100% all in Le'Veon so Bell? So you feel like he might be one of those players that is going to be paid for what he did instead of what he's going to do? I just, I with Le'Veon, my question has always been, football players play football. He sat out a year. Um, I, you know, he said before, he's not defined by football. He gets a little injury because he carries the ball a lot, and he's their best running back by a mile. He'll get 24 carries, gets dinged up. How do I know, Le'Veon Bell's like, you do realize I'm giving you a deal on this? I don't know. I don't. I hope not. I, I, I don't, I don't want to misquote uh, Nick Wright's statistic about him being the most used running back in NFL history. I think that's what he said. So it's kind of tough for me to imagine that a guy that, has a workload like that doesn't love football now i understand what you're saying sometimes guys get paid and they're like cool i got my money i'm good but every time a player holds out for money that's the same story like well you can't really care about football that much because you're not out there playing like sometimes you have to prioritize and plan right. for the future and he, he got the deal he wanted so he's not going to get that money back but sometimes you have to sacrifice for the long term and i feel like that's that's what he did. So yesterday, the NBA announced that Russell Westbrook has been uh, fined $25,000 for his altercation with the fan. The fan was also banned from Jazz's arena for life. 
And uh, Westbrook said after the game that he responded the way he did because the fans' comments were disrespectful and racial. Well, last night, LeBron James was asked his opinion of the incident, and he supported Westbrook. That guy just took it too far on the other end. Um, there could have been some words. Uh, Russ could have said a little bit differently. Um, but at the end of the day, he was in the right. That guy's in the wrong. Stand up and salute. I salute the Utah Jazz and with their organization on doing what they did. Am I heckling the opposing guy or am I crossing the line? And there's a fine line when you, well, it's not a fine line. It's, that line is very bold. and we, Everyone knows when you're crossing the line. He's actually right. He, he immediately corrected himself. There isn't a fine line. It's actually very clear, the if, line of, of disrespect and racial comments and heckling. It's not confusing to anyone unless no. you're like this guy who has no, no concept of what's appropriate in life. It's so funny. Yesterday I went to the Internet and people were defending the fan. And it was like, well, if you don't let us yell stuff, 90% of the fans will never go. And it's like, no, 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 no. 99% of fans hate hecklers. Right. Like, heckler guy really thinks that he's got the support of the arena. No, he doesn't. You, you, you don't. Like, the heckler guy is living in his own dimension. No, heckler guy is a narcissist. Yes. And believes that everyone has come there to hear him. Yes. And, and not see the elite, uh, best athletes in the world compete against each other. That's what Heckler Guy believes. Also, that's nonsense. So you're telling me if we banned all of the the racists who are who are so emboldened and entitled that they feel comfortable yelling in front of thousands of people the, the, at, a, at a professional athlete who could destroy them physically if they wanted to. If we remove all of those people, there's not going to be any NBA fans. I might be being a little optimistic here, but I feel like the NBA will still be okay. Yeah. They'll find people God. to go to the games. It's There's no defense of the fans, and a lot of players have come out not only defended Westbrook, but said that they experienced a lot of this, too. So I'm I'm glad that the Jazz got on it and did not drag out the investigation and got to the bottom of it and, and got the guy out. But I, I, don't, I don't anticipate this happening moving forward the way that people think it will with Westbrook because yeah. they banned him. So there's clearly consequences. Yeah. Agree. Uh, joy with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Line News. Uh, you know, it, it, it is going to be funny. Uh, I had talked to Odell Beckham about two weeks ago, and um, a lot of the stuff he said um, I'm not going to repeat because there's a certain trust. Um, and then there's a couple of things I feel comfortable saying. Um, so I'll, I'll just update you. When Odell called me a couple of weeks ago, we sat and talked for about 20 minutes, and it was a real heartfelt discussion. We talked about things I'd said and where his head was at. Uh, Odell did mention um, he was calling me from his home in Hollywood Hills and uh, he's got a cool pad and uh, said the Rams were a team he'd be interested in. He also mentioned the 49ers. Um, he did not mention Cleveland. That does not mean he's not happy playing in Cleveland. He just didn't mention them. Um, uh, it, it'll be interesting. He is a huge star. Uh, he has 12 million Instagram followers. Next closest in the NFL is Brady with six. He goes to runways, Fashion Week in Paris. Uh, he's lived in New York and Los Angeles. I'm sure, uh, you know, Cleveland is getting a superstar. LeBron's a superstar. He bailed twice on Cleveland. Um, this is not a place generally that's a free agent hub. It's interesting because here's my question. Connor Barwin played with him last year. Teams are going to take away Odell Beckham. They're going to bracket him. And that means... Baker Mayfield's got all sorts of talented options to go to. Their young tight end's outstanding. Jarvis Landry's good. Their backs are terrific. Baker Mayfield, as he develops as a quarterback, is going to be facing a lot of double teams on Odell Beckham. And my guess is Baker's a smart kid. He's not going to try to force the ball into Odell Beckham. And if Odell Beckham has a couple of weeks when he gets four targets and Jarvis Landry has 13, how will that play? Connor Barwin talked about playing with the Giants and how gifted Odell is. He's so special, and what teams do to him defensively uh, is unlike any other player. Like, I was in the division with Philly, and we, we literally bracketed him every single play of every time we played him, which that doesn't happen to anybody else in the league. Um, so you need to get him involved somehow. You have to because he's such a special player. And uh, I think that's hard for coaches to figure out how to do. I, I think it is. And I think he will be doubled a lot. And Baker doesn't need to force it to him because this is not the Raiders where it's Antonio Brown and not much else. 
the Browns have all sorts of talent. I think they have the best young tight end in football. They have three legit running backs. Kareem Hunt, Duke Johnson, Nick Chubb are all legit. Jarvis Landry's a very good, very good number two. So if, if, if Odell gets doubled and bracketed, they're just not going to throw to him. How will that sit? He is an American superstar. It's the biggest star in the NFL that's not a quarterback. Uh, coming up next, Pro Day, Kyler Murray, Joel Klatt. We'll check in. Always good to be in the know. Especially important when it comes to your personal info, like your social security number. That's why Discover's here to help. They send an alert if they find your social security number on any one of the thousands of risky websites. Best of all, this service is free for Discover card members. All.